As you guys know, darkroom printing has become a big part of my photography workflow over the past couple of years. The majority of the images that you see me publish on Instagram or on my website, I would say come out of this darkroom. So what I want to do in this video is teach my friend Linus how to make his first darkroom prints. And I think it'll be a really fun video because we'll cover more of the nuanced details that go into the process, like dialing in the colors and the exposure and the creative parts that come with this printing process, as opposed to the technical gear side of things. He's brought some negatives with him today. He is an incredible photographer. Over the past year, I've watched him do some amazing work for the music artist Khalid, including single covers, stadium tours, and I'm really excited to dive into some of his negatives today, watch him make some prints, and watch him experiment with this darkroom process for the very first time. Everybody, please welcome my ex-roommate. Hi, uh, yeah, I'm Linus. <laughs> Hi, yeah, I'm Linus. I moved to LA two and a half years ago. The second day I moved here, I met Willem in person for the first time, and we became friends. I ended up living with him for about a month and a half. And in my time in LA here, I've shot so many different, like such a variety of different like photography work. Um, I've done a bunch of tour photography, a ton of cool studio stuff, and a lot of portraiture just out in nature and outside. So I brought a bunch of different negatives to reflect that. So this should be really fun to experiment with and it should be cool to watch him make his first print. I'm ready. Yeah, you should wanna I... start with some contact sheets? Yeah, let me uh... sleeve I... them up. Can I get a couple of these? Yeah, yeah, All right, dollar cool. a piece, but yeah, I got you. Cool, let's do I'm it. Just kidding. <laughs> Linus is gonna contact sleeve all of his negatives. Then we'll mix up some chemistry, get the processor going, put the blackout curtains on the windows, and then make some contact sheets and he can kind of see the different negatives that he has to choose from and select the final one to make a full print of. He's brought quite a lot, so sounds like we're gonna be busy here printing a bunch of different negatives and we'll show you the whole process. This is that roll I shot of you with your WRX in the desert. That's me on some gelatinous material. With his sedan with a wing on it for some reason. <laughs> I'll talk you through the papers and chemicals that we're using real quick. So it literally comes in bags Whoa. like that. And you have to basically cut it down with a guillotine paper cutter in the dark. It's really difficult to do. And then once you do that, you store it in boxes. Chemistry wise, I'm using this silver pixel RA4 developer because same deal again, I can't find the Kodak stuff anywhere anymore. We've also got a Blix kit. It's kind of similar in terms of the processes to developing color film. If you've ever done that before, you have a developer, Blix, and then stabilizer. So we're gonna mix some of this up and then we'll throw it in the processor, which is right here. Sweet. This is the processor. set up the glass here which is literally a picture frame that I took apart I just lay it right here duct tape it down 
And then this is my very fancy contact printing setup. So you just put a sheet of paper under here, put your negatives on top, go like that, and expose it. So, Dude, sick. Yeah. You want to get to work? We, yes. Oh, we, have to, we have to make it dark, I forgot. We gotta, we gotta black it out in here. This is arguably my least favorite part of this whole process. I never really figured out a good way to black out these windows. So I just have literally a piece of plywood with duvetine over it. Doing a four hour darkroom printing process, all for your photo to get 13 likes on Instagram. <laughs> what is the point? This one's a little less perfectly trimmed, so I have to kind of jam it in there. In three, two, one. And goodbye, security deposit. <laughs> I wish it was joke. I wish that was a joke. I wish it was joke. I wish it was joke. <laughs> I wish it was a joke. For those unaware, Willem's first language is Flemish and Dutch. So sometimes he says the wrong thing in English. Let's see if it worked. Oh yeah, that's dark. We're about to do some contact printing. I don't know where my negatives are. Is this them? Yeah, that's them there. Um, and Willem set up the piece of glass so I can just throw it on top of the paper under there. Yeah. We're aligning the enlarger for a, a larger. I usually try to set it in a similar position so that it's at a similar exposure time to what I'm used to, which is like 16 or 17 seconds. So what we're about to do is take a sheet of paper like this. This one is now obviously, take the negative sleeve in the dark, just kind of line them up like that. And then basically what I do is I just open this, straighten that out, drop that. And usually that's pretty good. Can we turn off the lights for a sec? Wait, how does it turn off? Up here? Yeah, it's a switch. Uh, oh, I just stubbed my toe. You good? Yeah, I'm good. All right. In the dark, it'll Whoa. look like that. And we basically expose it for 17 seconds. After that exposure is done, you open this back up, take your negatives off, walk over here to the processor, which is now up to temperature. Just gonna open this, slide that in there. I basically put it against the furthest edge. And then it'll just slowly process it through there and but basically once it's closed it's light proof so at that point you can turn the lights back on so all of that needed to be done in the dark yeah yeah of course yep. okay up until that lid closes nice sweet dude i can't wait to see that print yeah you're gonna do the rest of them though and that one's actually just gonna be a black sheet of paper <laughs> Well, all our contact sheets are actually done. They look beautiful. Dude, they're gorgeous. Nice variety. We got all the colors dialed in pretty good. Yeah, so cool. What do you think? First contact sheet experience. Man, it's cool. I mean, I used to make like fake contact sheets. I'd scan all of the film with all their borders and then put them together in Photoshop. And this is just much cooler looking in every single way. Probably because it's like the actual way to do it. but. We thought this would be like a little like two hour thing maybe. It's literally pitch black outside. We started at like noon. <laughs> Somehow we've only gotten to contact sheets. <laughs> Thank you.
So now what we'll do is we'll make a test strip. So this is what that would look like in the dark. I might set this timer to one second. Just leave a sliver of light there and then start that exposure and do another second and another second and another second and just try to get maybe 10 different exposure times in there. And what that will do is basically give you a gradient of exposure time starting from one second all the way up to 10 and you'll know what the proper exposure is. First two test strips. Oh, nice. What do you think? This one looks good here. You said that was like six seconds? Yeah, each of those is, each About. of those strips is two seconds, so. Maybe like six on this one too. Set this guy to six seconds. Linus is gonna do the job. Let's see if I got it. The very first print out of the enlarger. What are your thoughts? It's great, dude. It looks really good. Um, maybe just a little bit more warmth or something? Yeah, I think when you compare it to the contact sheet, it is definitely more blue. Here we go. Print number two. We flipped it. We added some warmth. Next one's coming out. I gotta say, I think this one's about to be good. All right, y'all, I think it's really, it's a little cut off, but the color and everything is great. Dude, we're getting so lucky with these. Like you just didn't slide it, it slid out of that left edge. Yeah, like that, see? Oh, okay. Easy fix though. Somewhere right about here, I was holding the heaviest light I've ever held. <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> you're, you're right out of frame holding a light that looked like this, but also like was 70 pounds for some reason. <laughs> Say we could call that one a final. The only reason this one is not a final yet is because my processing machine for some reason decided to take a nap uh, in the middle of this print. <laughs> so you can see a line going through the print right there, which it's subtle, but it's enough to want to redo it. So once we redo that, we'll be done with these two and we'll move on to some more negatives. Here's one where the processor decided it was gonna work the whole time. That's just a water line. Dude, it looks great. Yeah, it looks really nice. There it is. Going in. And then one more negative. This one's gonna be a little harder to do because it's got the red, I think. That one's gonna be tricky, man. Let's just add some green and some blue you to it. You wanna do like that one? No, 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 no. Let's do this one. Red and some blue. Dude, finally a clean negative. <laughs> It's so dusty now, man. All right, we got two more test strips out the processor of our two new negatives. This guy looks familiar. They could both use a little blue, I think. Yeah, and this one could use a little green. You look like a Grecian god paired with a Belgian waffle. <laughs> so maybe we'll just throw in some cyan and that'll fix all our problems in one go this is wasting away willem's money man at least this isn't the good paper right it's just the fuji stuff no it's the good paper oh okay cool <laughs> that hey how color, does the color look the colors are looking sweet so what did we do to get from this to this it was we got like some cyan that's it yeah just a little cyan and a second darker i think Makes it's a crazy, big difference. Crazy how different the red of the car is. Yeah, but you're right. The red of the car is more accurate in this one for what time of day it was, you know what I mean? He's not single though, but like, ladies, I am. Moment of truth for the Subaru. 1.30 a.m. 
and we have a print in the middle. It looks yes. good. It took barely any work to get it here. Yeah, that took nothing compared to the other one. And I just wanted to gift this to you, dude. I just think that you oh, deserve... Oh, really? You, do, you deserve to have a print like this. Of myself? Yeah, dude, why not? You can throw this on the wall, like, right next to that red car. That other red sedan by another company. <laughs> now for this photo, I do think we need to make some major color adjustments. The sky is, like, right. way yellow. Instead of 20 on the blue, maybe, like... Oh, no, it just broke. Did it? Yeah, I should have warned you not to do that. Well, folks, we're really moving in the wrong direction here. I think we actually <laughs> broke the enlarger. Uh, the filter snapped loose and just went full blue on us. So let's see if we can do a quick little wheel and verb enlarger repair. We really blew it, dude. It's like midnight. It's almost midnight at the verb household as Willem prepares to try to repair his enlarger. The verb creature in its own is a creature that likes repairability, which is why he walks on so many cars and with problematic old cameras. Will he be able to fix the filter dial that makes the colors change? The world may never know. I think I fixed it. You just twisted the dial, dude. I had to snap it back into place. Why don't you do it this time, man? I won't touch the dial on this. No, screen. no, no, you're doing it, dude. These are, it's not called me printing for my friend. <laughs> there friends. we go. Yeah, we're friends, man. All right, so. We're friends as long as this wraps up in the next hour. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, dude. It's looking a lot better than this. <laughs> I'll tell you that. I don't even know where we're at with it anymore. I think it looks good. Look at the color of the sky. It's like actually where it should be. Oh yeah. So let me dry this off and then we'll see what it actually looks like. That's color correct. And you can even, this one happens to have the blue of her jacket in it. And that's also something I was kind of looking for. Let's so. just make a full print of that then. Right. I'm glad we got one that demonstrates also sometimes the struggles of printing an image. And it's usually a funky color one that will be yeah. difficult, but. It's a tale as old as time. Time to look at another print. It's 2 a.m. <laughs> Did we do it right? Oh, that's actually so beautiful. I think so, man. Did we do it? Cause like, look how far it's come. So this one, this one was the first one. And then we went more warm with it on accident. And then I broke the thing. Oh, so it went blue. And then we had this one here, which is the exact same. It's gonna be a little hard to get it like, how the scan looked especially, but. It looks really beautiful. I think that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a great time. This was so much fun. I mean, I've never experienced anything like this. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to Linus down below and uh, Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is an incredible all-in-one website building platform that you can use to build your photography portfolio online. I've been using Squarespace for so many years now and they've made it so easy to get a website up and running with my photography. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, you can hit the link in my description for a 14 day free trial of Squarespace. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Willem for 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Peace.